now we're gonna go full throttle here with the RT Durango again in manual mode. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over a 2021 Dodge Durango RT. But first and foremost, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram here in Sandy for providing us with this Durango. Check out their inventory in the link below. Let's just get straight into the video. Under the hood of the RT Durango, we have a Natchi aspirated 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 14 around town and then 22 on the highway with power outputs being 360 horsepower and then 390 pound feet of torque. Let's go over the front end of the RT Durango. So first and foremost, you still get the really cool sport hood with all of the venting that just looks super aggressive. And then you can see the front fascia and the lights have been changed slightly. You can see you've got the new LED lights here with the full LED projector bulbs. And then you do get the fog lights just down in this little housing. And then they've got some venting that comes off of it. I think it just looks really cool aesthetically. Parking sensors all along the front end. But overall, they still kept that like really aggressive look for the front end of the Durango but just made it look a little bit more modern. Coming around the side here, we've got two 65 millimeter tires on 20 inch wheels in the front and over in the rear as well. I really love the design of the wheels and I love how it's kind of like a dark metallic gray for the coloration on them. And then here's a quick look at what we can see in the front suspension with the RT Durango. And then you do get this really cool Hemi badging and then I love how they have the mirror blacked out as well. And then here's kind of like your full side view on the RT. Now let's pop into the back here of the RT. So you can see just underneath this little part, we do have a little bit of extra storage. And then you get a 12 volt back here as well. As for the seat, you just pull that and then it throws on the headrest. And then you can just push the seat down. And then if you want the seat back, you just pull that little strap, pull the headrest back up. Pretty straightforward on the functionality with that. And then you do get this random little storage bin here on the side. Not sure what it's for, but you get it. And that's all for the rear. Let's go over the rear of the RT Durango. So you get the massive light bar back here and then you can see you've got all the blacked out badging. Now I've got the bezel for the tow package just down below and then you've got the dual exhaust tips on either side. Tongue casting the RT is about 7,400 pounds and if it doesn't have a little hump back here, that means that there's no tow package. So if it's flush, no tow package. If that has a little bit of a hump, then there's a tow package in the rear. Parking sensor just up above it and it's everything for the back. Now let's go over the door panel here in the rear. So you can see you've got this pretty interesting trim right here, but you've got really nice soft touch leather here and you've got red stitching that goes all throughout. I actually like the door handle because they've kind of like blacked out the trim just around it. This Durango does have the captain chairs. So again, you got that continued theme of the red stitching all over the chair and then the full leather, the perforations on the side. This leather feels really, really nice actually. And we will be comparing this to a GT so you guys can kind of see the difference in the seats. But let's actually pop in. So step in height, it's really easy to get in. If you're wondering, I'm 5'11", and then you can see legroom is pretty good. And yes, I'm wearing shorts again today. Got a couple vents right here and then you can see you've got a couple usbs with the heated seats and then a full power outlet you do get a couple cup holders here for the rear passengers as well they can control the climate zone here in the back but you can lock it out from the front um, infotainment system if you don't want them to use the climate controls and then as for the rear i'd reserve it for kids Legroom is pretty tight back there. Um, headroom is actually pretty good. It's just legroom that's kind of an issue and then you can see they actually do get another cup holder there in the back Now looking at the door panel here at the front, you can see you've got that same trim and the same soft touch leather with the stitching that goes all throughout all of your window controls, your mirror controls. We do get memory seats here with the RT, a couple speakers for the sound system. And then here are the seats at the front. So again, full leather, you've got a little Dodge logo there in the center. And then you have the red stitching all throughout perforated leather there in the center. And then we can see you've got the adjustments here on the side of the seat. Pedal layout there at the bottom, this little hood latch release. Here's the light control, and the steering wheel is automatically adjustable. And there's one more look before we pop in. Now, 
Now here's the steering wheel with the RT Durango. So you can see you've got smooth leather at the top and at the bottom. Then you've got perforated leather on the side, so it's a little bit grippier. And then they did blacked out stitching to kind of just black out everything on the steering wheel. Now coming a little bit close, you can see you've got the cruise control paddle shifters on the back if you want to shift the gears yourself. And there are radio controls next to those paddles. So volume on this side, channel on the other side. And then you've got controls for the center stack, your voice command controls as well. And then you do have a stock for the windshield wipers. But other than that, that is the steering wheel for the RT. Now here is the center gauge cluster. You can see that you've got analog gauges for the RPMs and the fuel and the temperature and all that stuff. And then in the center screen, you can see that it's a digital layout that you can kind of scroll through a couple different menus. It'll always show you the miles per hour and hmm, someone's already gone up to 88 miles per hour in this. Pretty interesting. But anyways, as with the rest of the screens, you can see pretty standard setup. They haven't really changed too much with this, but I'll just keep it to be a digital speedo. Now, this is arguably the best part of the new RT Durango. So first off, we'll go over the backup camera function of it. So you can see you've got a nice backup camera. Sorry, I should have cleaned that off before I did the video. The resolution's not that bad. The camera's just a little bit dirty, but you can see the lines do turn with the steering wheel and Again, you do have parking sensors in the front and the rear with this camera system. As for the rest of the infotainment system, I love the look of this new infotainment system. Response time is just as good as the other infotainment systems that Chrysler has in their vehicles, which pretty much just top notch for the industry. But this is just cool how much information it actually gives you all the cool stuff. And again, I have to do this in every single Durango video, but you've got the headrest fold. So you see the rear headrest, well, bam. Pretty cool feature. I don't really know any other vehicles that uh, have that. They've got shades in the back, but they don't have a headrest fold. But yeah, it's just a really cool looking infotainment system. In general, it's really easy to use as well. Response time on it's good, but I just, I don't know. I love the new look of this and I'm really excited to see this come into other vehicles. I'm guessing that this is gonna be in the trucks pretty soon. And yes, since this is an RT, you do get the performance pages and look at that. We finally have instantaneous performance pages. Usually you have to wait like a few minutes for it to load up, but this, you just get it right away, which uh, is pretty cool. And I'll give you guys a little bit of the dyno sheet. Boom, there you go. Now, just down below the infotainment system, you see you've got a bunch of controls for the heated and cooled seats and the heated steering wheel as well. You can turn that on via the touchscreen if you just press the little comfort tab, then that'll pull up like the climate controls and all that kind of stuff and the seats. But you've got buttons if you don't wanna to have to worry about that. And then you've got the analog radio controls as well. And then just down here, you can see you've got the parking sensors. You're gonna turn those on or off, your stability control, hazard lights. And then for the drive modes, this does confuse people with the Durango. So right now we're technically in the eco mode. And then if you press eco mode, off, that's technically normal mode and then if you press sport mode on then well that's sport mode and that also pops up in the center screen so you can see sport mode pretty neat and then I don't want to forget this because I forgot this in my GT review this does have the trailer brakes so if you get the tow package you get trailer brakes integrated from the factory they're just below the push start button now this is kind of like the whole center console area you can see that you do have a couple of usbs down here wireless phone charger and then here's a shifter for the eight speed automatic again you can mainly shift with the shifter or you can use the paddles whichever you prefer and then because this is an rt you do get the low range which is pretty cool it's an all-wheel drive low range you just press this little button to turn that on and then again a couple cup holders i love all the red stitching all around here and you can see it continues onto the dash and onto the center console as well it might look pinkish on the camera uh, it's kind of like a pinkish red anyways you can see in there pretty normal still get a 12 volt still let you know via that arrow and then coming over here all that stitching continues to the glove box which is lined with felt and that's all for that area up top we do have universal garage door openers and then you still get a regular center if nothing has changed with that not a panoramic center for anything like that and then you can open up the tailgate with that little button and then full black headliner now that we're done going to the interior on this particular rt durango let's quickly get into pricing so in terms of pricing this particular rt durango with the black top package stickers for about fifty-five thousand dollars before any type of market adjustment if you guys are wondering the price range on rts like a base base model one with four wheel drive they usually seem to be in like the high 40s low 50s and then like a fully loaded one um, seems to be like in the low 60s for the msrp that all being said let's take this out and see how it drives Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off here in the RT. So you can see visibility over the hood's really good and it's cool to see the little venting there, just a really neat little thing. 
There's your visibility through both the mirrors and they do have blind spot monitoring. Here's your visibility all throughout the rear of the RT, which is actually pretty solid as well. There's a little bit of a blind spot back there, but in general, really big windows and it's got blind spot monitoring, so who cares? But that all being said, let's set off. We are initially setting off in the 2021 RT and I really wanna see if this drives any differently compared to a 2020 RT. I imagine not, but we'll at least see. So initially with the road noise and ride quality, it's pretty much the same. So I'm not really noticing a difference with the ride quality of this compared to a 20. It feels about the same. And then in terms of the noise, you hear about the same amount of engine noise, you hear about the same amount of tire noise, which if you're wondering compared to competitors, it's really good. This is a little bit firmer than like a Durango Citadel. You do feel a little bit more of the suspension, but it's not a massive difference by any means. But the thing that you do benefit from having a little bit stiffer suspension is the RT does handle a little bit better. And you guys can kind of see that coming around this little corner right here. For being a big third row SUV that's supposed to be good, just supposed to be good for towing, it actually just, it handles really well. And sorry, for some reason, I cannot talk during the driving portion, probably because I'm tired and hungry and um, see how the downshifts are in the normal mode. Yeah, downshifts are actually relatively good, um, but I imagine once I pop it into the sport mode, they're gonna be a lot sharper. And don't worry, I'm not gonna be a BMW driver. I'll turn my turn signal on. Get our minor acceleration here in the manual mode. Yeah, very smooth with the gear shifts. Those are really solid actually. And the engine noise, oh my goodness, I forgot how good a Hemi sounds. This just, it just has such a nice, just, masculine like deep sound it's so good absolutely love it and um well we hit traffic but look at that new defender i need to review one if you're a land rover dealer and you want to let me review one just uh yeah hit me up now we're gonna go full throttle here with the rt durango again in manual mode oh <laughs> I hope you guys heard that. That sounds amazing. Gosh, I forgot how good these sound. Yeah, that is crazy. So um, just from the sound perspective, definitely think this is worth it over getting the uh, V6 Citadel or a V6 GT. That's, oh my gosh. The sound alone is so worth it. It's such, it's just such a nice deep sound and the acceleration's really good. Like I've driven the SRT and that's absolutely insane, but this is more than enough power. The towing capacity is really solid on this and it's actually getting to summing things up. So as a third row SUV, I think it does a really good job, has all the tech that you need, has a tri-zone climate, all that stuff. As a performance SUV. It does a really good job with the Hemi. It sounds really good. I think the question on everyone's mind is gonna be, should you buy this or the Ford Explorer? So the Ford Explorer feels quicker, but remember I'm at 4,500 feet elevation. The Ford Explorer is a twin turbo three liter V6. This is a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V or V8, right? So you're gonna have a little bit more power loss with this. So the Ford Explorer feels quicker. This sounds a whole lot better. So you have to decide if you want a little bit more performance, a little bit better sound. This does have a higher towing capacity though. So yeah, that'd be a tough pick for me and it's probably a tough pick for you guys too. That is gonna sum things up for our video on this 2021 Dodge Durango RT. Again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Dodge Ram here in Sandy for providing us with this RT Durango. Check out their inventory in the link below. I'll see all of you in the next video.